Hey guys, I'm going to show you what I did with the manifold. This is the uh, Cobra Shelby that's going on the GT40 race project. Now you have to think about when this was designed in the early 60s, it was probably designed to go about 6500 RPM. It's a dual plane. Okay, it's a good dual plane, but it's a dual plane. So, as usual, most dual planes only flow about 220. This has got pretty good fat runners on it. I mean, you can see they're beefy. And they do have a nice taper to them all the way down. But we've got four real short runners, four real long runners. Try to get them all even is going to be a bit of work. Now, I'm not going to say how much work I put into this, but it was, uh, it was tough. And one thing you need to keep in mind with a manifold like this even with a six inch burr, let me grab the burr. I gotta kind of one hand this, so. If we use a, a six inch burr, right, it looks long. But by the time you put it in, and you have it in the, in the, in the die grinder, toast guys, sorry. We're only getting in maybe this far. Okay. And same thing on the other side. Well, guess what? There, there may be a section in here that we're not going to be able to get to. So, making this end that we can get to huge and then have a smaller spot here and then huge isn't really what we want to do. So, we work on the things that we know are going to give us a, a boost. The radius, the radius N2 the runners can be worked on quite a bit. There's a nice amount of metal there. You got to be careful you don't blow through on this side or this side. Now, the lower plenum is much harder to get to, but usually the lower plenum flows better because it's got so much more volume in the plenum, which is why when I do a notch, and I usually only do a notch on something that's going to be a dual plane that's going to be run harder than its design RPM. I'll show you. Okay, I've shown this manifold before, but you see how much smaller that notch is? So this is a Performer RPM Quadrajet. That's designed for 6500, but put a notch like that in, you can get more than that out of it. Plus it helps balance your, your runners if you know what you're doing. Okay, let's take a look at the Ford. Bigger notch because the air demand on the manifold is going to be much more. Now, this was my first cut on the divider, but I'm pretty happy with the results and I think it's probably going to be good where it is. It may need uh, a little finessing here and there. You know, a manifold like this, like I said, you can't get to everywhere. You do the best you can with it and, and send it. I do use a texture on it to keep the fuel in, uh, in atomization, and if you take a look at this divider, it's got a different radius on the high plenum versus the low plenum, okay? High plenum usually flows less, so we want to bias it to get more air to the upper H. Okay, a few of these runners is not far off from what a tunnel ram would see. You know, the barrel is like right at the end of the runner. Okay. Those usually flow pretty well. Okay, this is, now this is a, a lower H at 6, lower H 7. 5 was really rough. 5 was, no, I don't think 5 was the one we were measuring out of. Let me just check Okay, five is the one we were flowing through the head and all. Now, unfortunately, you may be able to see it, but all the way back there, there was all kinds of slag on that back wall. It was really having a hard time. You can see it's still an extremely rough texture. I may... I'm having problems using the very tip of the burr to, to do a finish because these are so deep. I'm going to have to work on my technique for that. Part two, guys, don't touch the screen. A lot of these are gonna be spliced together because phone is extremely sensitive. 
Okay, number eight, you can see, it looks like somebody hit it with, uh, I don't know, a chainsaw. It's really rough on the bottom. Okay, two and three are actually our best flowing runners, and if you see why, I mean, you've got the barrel, and you've got the runner, and you're, you're there. Okay, that's an upper H, but the way that the, the runner curves down is quite nice. Okay, let's see if we can see anything on four. And one. One actually worked out pretty well. Now, you're going to say, hey, the corners. Well, guess what? The radius on those corners is really too tight. Tight corners and airflow are not a marriage made in heaven, okay? In reality, they should be all filled with a, a big three-quarter inch radius all around. It would really work a lot better. Okay, now, as far as the radius to the two upper H long runners, they need some work, almost like a, a sh you need to work that radius like a short side radius. You got to widen it and you got to blend it right into that divider that you cut out in order to make them uh, start working half decent. <clears throat> Overall, we're doing pretty good on this manifold. Now, somebody posted uh, flows on this manifold stock and then ported. Stock was like 250, ported was over 300. You're way better than me. Mine was not even close to that. Now, I'm not saying it can't be done, but uh, I'm not. I'm not getting there. So, I'm not going to let it let it bother me. It, you know, everyone has different abilities, guys, and we need to uh, keep that in mind. Now, you're going to see my sheet. It's a mess, but it always is. So, if you watch, I give you credit. Okay, we've got our numbers. This should be three up for each one, right? The first one is what it flowed stock. The second one was fully ported, but a full divider. And then the third one was the notch divider. Now, you know what was interesting, and I didn't figure it out until later. When you stuff these runners with a foam pillow, it's very possible that it was blocking some of the airflow to these. Okay, so, I mean, like this, this runner here, 203, I think that's what happened. Okay, now the last ones I did, I paid attention to that uh, not being blocked. So our last ones are going to be more accurate. So we were a little bit, you know, we gained some here. We lost a bunch here. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. This one we gained a huge amount. Lost a little bit with that one. That one, that one should not be blocked with a foam pillow. Not sure what happened there. Here we had a huge boost. We had a huge boost here. Okay, that was with all the porting done. Then we would go to the notch. And when you do the notch, you're going to change, you know, a few things in the plenum. Well, the idea is to try to get them balanced the best you can. So this is our lowest, 236.3. Still not bad. Okay, 249, that's right in the area we want to be. 245, not bad. 246, not bad. Overall, pretty close for those those uh, four runners. How about here? 249, not bad. 255.4, a little higher. 260, those are the ones that look like a tunnel ram. Okay, those are the upper. Those are the upper H, and the the barrels are right there. So it makes sense that those flow so well. And I was able to get this one up to 250. So. Our highest flowing is 260, and our lowest flowing is 236. Not great. Is it possible to get more out of this? Yeah, will I work on it? Probably a little bit more, um, but not a lot. This has already got a ton of time into it. And uh, the next part of the equation is we have the heads flowing about... 
about this much. So when we bolt it on with the carb, the intake, and the head, we should be doing better than we were doing last time. Our last time we flowed through the carb, the manifold, and the head. Let's get it up. Okay, this is what we did with the manifold and carb. We did 198. Now, if we have the head flowing about 245 and the intake manifold flowing 245, we should be able to beat that. And then we'll do some calculations and see what else we need to do from that point on. Sorry about the part two, guys. Cannot figure out how to do uh, editing. I'll have to find out how to do that someday so I can make better videos for you guys. It's Thanksgiving, and it's about time to get cleaned up to go out to, to my buddy's house. Enjoy your Thanksgiving, guys. Be thankful for things that are good in your life. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.